Well, how about that, Kurt? Uh, an MMA legend here. I mean, UFC Hall of Famer, multiple time champion, and still doing his thing now uh, with the uh, PFL. I, I got to check that out. I have to admit, it's kind of not been on my radar, but now that I understand it's less about spectacle, more about sport, I'm into it. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, I think that's really cool that they're doing that. And and you know what? Randy was a great interview today. He is so articulate, very well with his words, uh, tells great stories. I really enjoyed it. If you haven't already, go follow Randy on Twitter. You can find him anywhere you enjoy social media. He's got all the different platforms. It's Randy underscore Couture. Uh, greatly appreciate the opportunity to talk with him today. Hope you guys will throw him a follow. And it is kind of fun to think about what if, you know, what if he had, uh, cross paths with you in a wrestling ring or what if you got into MMA and we got to see Kurt angle, Randy Couture inside a cage. It's fun to think about what if it is a lot of fun. I think Randy and I are very much the same. We had great, incredible work ethic and we were strategists. We would figure out how to win. We wouldn't just go out there and, and throw your talents out on the mat or in the octagon. Uh, we go out there and we would, we would have a game plan in mind. And uh, I know a lot of fighters don't do that these days. They just want to go out there and throw. But uh, Randy's a strategist. That's what makes him so successful. Randy, I saw in my research that you were an alternate. You mentioned it for the Olympic team in 88. But you also were an alternate in 92 and even in 96 when Kurt won the gold medal. I didn't know that until I started doing some research here. What can you tell us about those 92 and 96 experiences? Well, you know, I think, again, you have to stay focused and recognize that everything happens for a reason. Have a little faith that things are going to turn out the way they're supposed to turn out in 92 and 96. I was the number one guy in my weight class at 90 kilos. And then later in 96 at 97 kilos, um, for, for the Olympic trials, I, I won the nationals, been the outstanding wrestler a couple of times, beat world and, and Olympic medalists in a lot of class, A tournaments, and, and by many people's estimation, I was the guy that they expected to make those teams and win medals. I managed to come up short in the, fi- in the final trials. And, and Kurt can tell you that the trial process to make the team is pretty long and pretty grueling. That's They've it. adapted it and slimmed it down a little bit in recent years, but it was a grind. You, you wrestled a lot of matches to get to that final match and, and be able to make the team. Um, you know, I managed to come up short, even as the number one guy and, in both 92 and 96 was the first alternate, uh, you know, in 92, uh, I believe it was Mike Foy that went in my place. And, and in 96, it was Derek Waldrop, one of my old teammates from the army who, who beat Mike Foy in the final match, uh, to make that team in 96. So, you know, I, I think those, those losses, those setbacks, that adversity made me hungry, made, I still had a fire something to prove and, and wanted to continue to go out there and compete. I think if I'd have won a medal in any, either of those Olympics, I would probably be a college coach somewhere right now and would have never wandered into a cage and, and into MMA. And I would have missed out on a lot, honestly. So things worked out. 